removing and replacing the exhaust valve and valve guide on an LV2. Before you can actually get to uh, access the exhaust valve and valve guide on the LV2, you will need to remove the complete frame assembly. Uh, in order to do that, please follow the link and the instructions to in the video for frame removal here. Once you've removed your frame assembly, we can start accessing the valve guide and the exhaust valve. In order to do that, we will need to gain access to a bolt, uh, which is inside the reg housing here. We don't have to remove the reg housing itself, but we do need to remove the HPR. So in order to do that, um, we need to remove the clip first, press and hold the HPR and the LPR bodies in place and slide off the clip and place that to one side. LPR will pop out slightly, you can remove the LPR body and then remove the HPR body. You can take out the two regulator springs and then we will need to remove the front HPR piston as well. The LPR piston can stay inside but the HPR piston will need to come out. With pointy nose pliers, carefully grab hold of the HPR piston and slide that out. Place that with the other regulator parts. We can now um, access the bolt which holds on the valve cha chamber cap. So we just take the hex key and drop that down into the bolt inside. Um, depending how tight that is, you may need some additional leverage, either using a T-bar hex key if you have access to one, or just using some pliers and carefully grabbing hold of the short arm of the hex key and loosening that so that the bolt can be removed. While you're removing the bolt, try and hold on or keep some pressure on the uh, valve chamber cap at the front. Uh, can remove that bolt. So it's loosened, you can just tip that out. This is a custom machined bolt. Remove that and then give the valve chamber cap a wiggle and the valve chamber and spring guide will come out. You can then carefully tip the mark forward and give it a tap and the exhaust valve will come out. Uh, the valve guide is still inside the body. In order to remove the valve guide, I want to remove valve plug on the bottom of the body. And then can use something like a pick and just very carefully push on the um, on the back of the valve guide, a little cup surface in the bottom, just push on that and that will slide the valve guide forward and then you can tip that out of the front. And that is the valve guide. And now you have these parts out of the body, we can inspect them. Um, the main things we want to inspect is the chamfered sealing surface around the face of the valve guide. We want to look at the face here of the exhaust valve. This is where the lever works. You want to make sure that's not too worn. It will wear over time, um, but uh, obviously this one being a relative new gun has no signs of wear on there. And then just also want to check the sealing surface around here the mates up with the valve guide itself. This is the main uh, poppet valve. This gets pushed open, allows air to travel through from the firing chamber into the bolt. Uh, this is normally closed. If there's any damage to either of the two sealing surfaces here then you will get a, a hiss and a leak down the barrel. There should be no reason to ever remove these from your marker unless you have a leak down the barrel. There is no maintenance you need to do to this on a regular basis. You are more likely to cause damage to these parts by removing them and reinserting them um, than you are due through normal play. Um, just leave these inside the marker if there's no leak down the barrel from the exhaust valve. Here we have the spring guide. This is now push fit assembly into valve chamber cap. 
there's nothing on there to maintain, no need for any grease or anything like that. Um, and that is your assembly from inside the marker. Now, reassembling this into the marker is the most critical phase. Normally, the way that these parts get damaged is by this being inserted into the body first, and with this part inside the, the marker body, the exhaust valve being dropped in from the top. If this gets dropped in, there's high chance that the head of the exhaust valve here, the, the stem of the exhaust valve will hit the lip of the valve guide, causing it to dint, and then that will cause a leak down the barrel. So the best way to assemble this, and the only way this should be assembled, is to assemble all of these parts together. And then you need to make sure that this cutaway section in the bottom, which engages with the valve plug, has to be towards the bottom of the marker. The hole, the top, this is the outlet from the valve guide, needs to be towards the top of the marker. So assemble everything together on the stem. Make sure the hole is at the top and then carefully insert a complete assembly into the marker. At this point you want to hold the valve plug in place and you want to flip the marker over and check that the cutaway in the valve guide where the head of the valve plug goes is in the correct orientation. You can see that one is there. You can now insert the valve plug. Again, this does not want to be over tightened. Just screw it in until it stops. And then we want to drop the um, locating screw or the retaining bolt back into place. And I would like to do this without actually dropping it in, but assembling it onto a hex key and inserting that all the way in. And then tightening that back into place. Again, does not need to be excessively tight. Screw it in until it stops. That should be fine. Okay, so you now remove the valve guide and the exhaust valve and we reinsert it in the correct manner in order to prevent damage to those critical parts and sealing surfaces. Now that they're back in place, we can reassemble the HPR and LPR. You can service these at this point if you like. Uh, these were recently serviced, so don't need any further maintenance. You can slide the HPR back in. Obviously making sure that the flaps are to the front and the back. And then drop the LPR spring back into place. Make sure that drops over the piston inside there. Then the LPR body can go back in. Again, flaps to the front and the back. And we can push and hold that in, hold both the regulator bodies in, slide the clip back into place. And that was the removal of the exhaust valve and valve guide on the LV2.